Hello there and welcome to Clockwork Empires. I'm your host, PPG Chu, and welcome to a new Let's Play series. And today we're taking a look at a very unique game at that. Today we're taking a look at what is dubbed as a, uh, well, a clockwork and cosmic horror themed survival, well, type of a sim building game. So, um, Clockwork Empires here is uh, is currently in early access. It caught my eye when it was in the uh, the Steam Green Light queue, and it's a it's a fairly fairly unique game at that. So, uh, the general pacing of the game is that you are in charge of leading a, a band of you know seven humble colonists out into the new world, um, setting up a colony. Much in much much inside you know I, I think I can draw similarities between this game and kind of uh, dwarf fortress and and things like that really. So it's quite a unique blend of game, uh, blend of, of different things. I, I, I found it highly polished. Uh, I found it uh, really, really neat in just, you know, how you build different things and all. And uh, namely, you know, kind of playing into that cosmic horror type of theme. Um, your, your your citizens are fully fleshed out. And one of the things that can happen inside the game is that they can actually form a cult and uh, go from there. And overall, I mean, it is a wonderfully fully fleshed out game. So uh, there's two zones that you can kind of start out with right now. There's, uh, there's a bit of a trial tropical themed area titled New Sogwood and there's a bit of a there's a bit of a I, I would say you know um, grassland slash forested area uh, titled New Antopia. I'm not really sure whether or not these are kind of well um, procedurally generated maps or whether or not the map is just really big and there's kind of multiple spawn locations but I've shown up in a, a new part every time. So anyhow let's begin a new uh, well game and let's set a course for adventure over here. All right, so there we go. We've hopped on the game, and well, the game actually has a fairly uh, well elaborate tutorial for you to set up. But I think we'll skip that and we'll just hop right on into the game. So we'll go from here. Right. So meet our lovely band of seven colonists. They've been uh, airdropped some supplies by uh, well, the Imperial Air Corps, which is kind of how they got here. And uh, well, now that we're set out into the new world, we have uh, free reign to kind of do whatever we want. So, um, like I said, I mean, a lot of, uh, where you know, a, de a decent amount of the game is kind of dwarf fortress, I would, I would say, themed, if you will. So, uh, starting off, we want to designate a stockpile, and how this typically works is that your people just kind of gather different things, put it inside the stockpile, and then... Uh, gradually they'll do, um, well, you know, gradually as you kind of build around that, um, your, your colonists would just kind of do different things. So, um, our colonists here will gradually fill that stockpile up, and in the meantime, we can give them a few different tasks as we go along. So, the general idea for the game, or, you know, as best as I, I've, I've, I've seen it, is to get some of your guys to start chopping down trees, get some farming going on, and then kind of uh, gradually move on to the other portions of the game uh, as, as soon as you kind of finish up with the uh, the possibility of all, all of your people kind of starving to death here. So uh, we'll get that started right over here. And then afterwards, let's designate two uh, farming plots, I think is a good number. Um, from the looks of things, I would really want to use this area right over here, but I need this tree chopped down, so we'll get somebody to do that right away. Right, so kind of in the same theme as Dwarf Fortress, I mean, your people do different things, um, you can't really necessarily control them, they'll, they'll however, kind of finish your orders as you gradually get them, uh, where you don't give them to these guys. So there we go. Right, and we'll get our guys to clear out these stumps as well, and get this area set up for uh, for some for for some buildings and things like that. So, um, in the meantime, one of the things about the game is that unfortunately there's there's no kind of fast forward setting, um, but it leaves us ample time to just kind of check out what we have around our tiles here. So, uh, from the looks of things, I mean, we have some berry bushes over here. Um, unlike Door Fortress or, you know, that type of game, um, I think some of these shrubs are just generic ones. I mean, you can clear them out, but they don't necessarily give you anything. Um, uh, moving over here, around the map, uh, there's a few other things lying about. Uh, first I want them to clear that, of course. Looks like there's a few, I want to say, like, you know, lowered parts of the terrain. There's some rocks over here for stone. There's some clay over here. 
and gradually as we explore the, the map we can find some more things that are just kind of littered about. So uh, in the meantime, I mean things are pretty good. I'll get a big zone for uh, for our people to clear the terrain with. And in the meantime, our, our people are just gradually stocking up on a few of the uh, the things over here. We'll get them to mine some of these boulders for stone as well. And with that started and all, I think we'll get the first building uh, out of the bunch set up. So I am going to set up a kitchen here. Or, you know what, I'll, ch I'll change that, I'll move that over here. So we can get a building that's kind of set up just like that. Plug it in. And the neat thing about this game is uh, when you build these buildings, how you build them is that you, you kind of pluck them down onto the terrain. But internally you actually build them up and you actually kind of put down different things they'll have um, on the innards of the building really. So, for example, uh, typically what I think you'll need for a kitchen here is that you need, of course, you need a furnace. Um, you probably want a, want a workshop, I think, is the biggest portion of it. And afterwards, you know what, for decor, we could put some pots and pans and things like that. And gradually, your, your citizens will just kind of build that building up. So that's one of the things that we need. And then afterwards, uh, you know what, there's two really, really good early game type of farming goods, really. We could get some cabbages and some pumpkins growing over here. So we'll get two uh, plots for that, and two groups will just gradually work those things. And in the meantime, I mean, building will take a little bit of time, seeing as how I think Josh, uh, Joshua Cord over here, he has to grab the, uh, the ore from these rocks first. Um, I think we can take a look at our different cast of people here. So starting off, I mean, each and every single one of them will have a little bit of a panel like this. And what this tells us here is, you know, about what their profession is, uh, what, what their professions are, what type of work crew they're in, um, what type of traits they have, and they'll have a lot of these, um, what type of afflictions they'll have when they get injured, and a, a lot of stuff about their mood. So yeah, it's quite neat. Uh, with Ada Frabjus over here, we can tell that she's a she's an N NCO. So um, if uh, she's our she's our only military unit at the moment, and well, if anything kind of comes up, she'll be the person who responds to that. How the game kind of works is that you have different work crews which do these different tasks. We'll see that later on inside the game, but uh, as, as of current as, as of yet, all of our people are actually overseers for the work crews. Um, they'll have different traits. So for example, she's a bit of a drunkard. Um, Ludenium Fiend, which is something that I don't necessarily know about. She has military training, it's xenophobic, things like that. And of course they'll have their mood, their morale. Um, they have a sanity meter as well, as odd as that sounds. I've actually yet to see that, you know, anything in interact with that, but I'd imagine that comes into play later on. They'll have a log as to, you know, what they've done in the meantime. So yeah, lots of different things kind of going on over here. And from the looks of things, that will be the end of the first day. And inside the night time, I mean, your, your, your citizens are kind of idle. They do their own thing. And this is actually um, one, of the, uh, one of the times that the, the cult thing comes into play, where in the night, I think they'll have different meetings and they'll, um, they'll, they'll try to like either convert people to their cause or they'll try to murder people and just, you know, do, do lots of very different things. In the meantime, though, I don't think we have any of those problems very early on. Looks like the kitchen's complete, though, so that's pretty good. In that case, I think our people just take a bit of a, of a break from, from their daytime activities and they'll just gradually settle um, to, yeah, to idle and doing their own things here. So yeah, that'll be that. Right, so we can take a look at some of these panels, and so in the meantime, we can take a look at, you know, um, what types of uh, supplies we have. Um, what other thing, you know, what we have in our stockpiles, we, from the looks of we have a creative combat supplies, things like that. We can take a look at different factions, and as it turns out, currently, I mean, there are bandits inside the game, there's fish people, there's uh, obliskians, which I'm not too terribly sure about, but I think they're brought upon by the uh, colonists, and as it turns out, there's four different, you know, empires inside the game. Um, I think they're all hostile to you so far, from what I've seen, I mean, they, they do attack you every now and in, but I've I've yet to see anything else kind of appear from them. So that's that, right? And in, in the nighttime, where people are still kind of doing their own thing, they'll walk around. But uh, it's a, it's yeah, it's kind of a good thing that the the night is uh, is shorter than than the days. 
Um, mostly because, I mean, there's no way to kind of skip through any of these parts. But you know what, that's fine and I'll... Right, so the kitchen here is done. It'll need the workbench to continue. It looks like Sydney here had a, had a bit of a panic attack. Uh, what had happened here? Um, he was comforted by having a good cower, apparently. Okay. So, I don't know, maybe it's the, the ghost template of the pots on the wall there or something like that that, that, that triggered it, but all right. Um, so yeah, your people just kind of, you know, do different things as time goes on. And with the start of day two, they are back to work. So, um, gradually you build up prestige and things like that, and uh, with those you can kind of buy different things. And you'll see that shortly after when we uh, start to get the first of the colonists along the way. Right, in the meantime, let's chop down a few more trees. Um, make some more room over here for, uh, for things to come. And over here, I'm gonna get a give our people a big order to forage practically everything over there. some of the wildlife already so that's pretty good so yeah um, you can you can actually hunt a lot of the wildlife as well we won't do that just yet because it does waste uh, supplies and you know from what I've seen so far you're actually pretty likely to be attacked early on in the game it doesn't kind of you know give you any quarrel in, in that sense so uh, I think we'll try to conserve whatever you know combat supplies we have really Right, in the meantime, I think we'll clear out some of these stumps as well, get our people to gradually do their thing. And take a look at over here, our people are just gradually building up this area, so not bad. Ah, one thing that I should note is that the game has a, has a bit of a long saving time. There we go. All right, well, so far so good. Uh, people are just kind of working away here and we should be able to build the second structure soon enough. Right, and from the looks of things, people are starting to, where they should be able to start construction of the, uh, yeah, the stone oven here. Kitchen's pretty much finished up. They'll need to build a workbench though, which will use some of these planks. And from the looks of things, we only have four planks, so we'll probably want to uh, grab a way to grab some more of those soon enough. And what I'm wa waiting for is uh, the berries to finish uh, picking over here and afterwards I think we'll get some people to uh, build us a new building a what is it called a uh, a carpenter's workshop soon enough and oh no this was the thing that I was waiting for so the Imperial Airship Corps reports that an unidentified group has been spotted approaching your colony so yeah there are these uh, well it's factions a faction of fish people evidently and these guys will attack your colony they're actually quite vicious they managed to take down uh, my first NCO in my first game but uh, be rest assured we have a, a plan to to kind of get rid of them this time the only thing being is that I would really like it if we had some more time to build up our colony uh, before that, but we'll see. Right, so as time goes on, we'll hopefully shuttle those uh, berries back in time. That should give our people enough food to yeah, keep through the first time. And there we go, the oven is complete. Workshop still needs that uh, workbench to be completed, um, but from the looks of things, uh, Sydney Golden Hook over here will gradually do that. Alright, there we go. 
So, uh, what we can do here is that um, as time goes on, we can kind of use prestige to call in people. And in addition to that, we can also call in for extra criminals, which kind of give you just these, these groups of indentured servants to work. Right, so from the looks of it, we can summon up um, a few of these guys. Um, <laughs> so we get Chelsea Cox Browns over here, and I think we also get Anok uh, Wilburn over here from the looks of things. Or no, we get a, we get a pull of three people. This is pretty good. Usually you only get one, but uh, yeah, it's quite neat. You can get people like that. And how it works is that uh, you typically need the overseer to, to do most things. But um, we can get somebody to work with the, the, the mining crew for now. We can actually conscript one of the, the people into the military, which will help out. Or actually, as a, for now, I think we'll conscript two of them into the military. Yeah, so this is what they'll do is that they'll pick up the weapons. You know, it might not be <laughs> a terribly great idea arming these uh, these convicts, but you know what? They're, they've been scripted, and you know what? They're here for the long haul. He seems really excited. So, yeah, we can arm them, and well, once these fish creatures kind of come into to sight, we'll be able to try to deal with them. So, fish person sighting. Looks like we have, uh, well, let's see. Chelsea Cogsbron said the report is citing a strange fishy, fishy looking creature. It walked upright, its eyes gleamed with some sort of intelligence. What shall we do? We can try to communicate with them, we can shoot them, or we can deny their existence. Um, you know what, we'll shoot them on sight, because from what I've seen, they're always hostile. And if you even if you try to help them, they'll you know what, they'll, they'll attack you, so you don't 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 even bother really is my uh, is my point there. Um so yeah, that'll be that. And okay, so it'll be another night, taking a look at our commodities over here. We have a lot of wood, we have a decent amount of rough stone blocks, and I think we have everything we need to build a, uh, a carpentry workshop. So let's get one of those things set up, and let's get, uh, well, you know, let's expand our colony here. So, I would actually really like it to build it right over here, behind the, uh, behind the... The, the kitchen. So with the flattened land tool, I wonder, can I convert any of the, um, can I convert any of the land over here into better um, flat land? Hopefully it'll then turn white and then we can build on top of it, but we'll see. Right in the meantime, our people just gradually do their thing and the kitchen is ready. Ooh, bandits arrive as well. Two foolishly brave bandits have, uh, have set up so we can shoot them just yet let's try not to provoke them I want to see whether or not you can kind of convert bandits onto your side what is happening over here it looks like she was attacked re uh, recently by uh, by one of these guys and I mean as you can see they uh, they have uh, you know pretty complex social interactions they were talking about something strange there I was worried for a second. I was like, you know, is that you know kind of the founding of the uh, the, the cult? Because that would be, yeah, that would be really, really bad. All right, so for now, let's take a look at how much food we have. Uh, we have a decent amount of berries. We still have the sausages, and I, I would assume the harvest for pumpkins and stuff will happen soon enough. So that's um, yeah. So yeah, we'll see what happens there. It looks like we have. Uh, you, it looks like we've seen the last of at least one group of fish people are with a with you know around our colony. So that's pretty good. And would you look at that? Immigration happens. We get from the looks of things three immigrants. We get an overseer and two laborers. So we get another group to work with and some more people just like that. My oh my. So some of these guys will help out doing uh, you know some of the farming and all. So that'll be good. And you know what? I think we might want to go with another uh, farming plot over here soon enough. Yeah, because I'm not really sure, you know, how many people we can actually feed with one of these. So, you know, I don't know. I don't want a one-tile farming plot. Um, so we might want to, you know, kind of be prepared for that. Grow some more pumpkins over here like that. And we'll just get things going like that. Right, so how are we doing over here for flattening the land? It looks like some parts of it are starting to become usable. It's not bad, not bad at all. Hmm, but I don't think that'll finish in time. 
Yeah, you can build buildings really next to each other, which I, I really like, despite it being, you know, honestly not that big of a deal. Uh, but in the meantime, I think honestly we just have to build a, uh, a carpenter's workshop over here. So let's get that done. Um, I think the general idea is that you want a carpentry workbench is all you really need. So um, I think it's actually best to have two of those. So we'll get something like that. And then later on, once we have the wooden planks, you of course get you know wood from um, from cutting down trees, wooden planks from refining them here. We'll get some door bays like that. Right, but in the meantime, I mean, we have a we have a pretty fully fledged camp over here. You know, people are uh, working away. The work crews are busy. Most of them are starting to to become more so staffed. And for food now, let's grab another stockpile, and I'll make a stockpile solely for food over here, so we can adequately see how much food we have. And I think we'll get it so that people move the food over here for now. Right, and our people here will uh, gradually do their thing. Oh. Huh, that's really weird. Looks like something took down the kitchen. Oh, I think it's uh, it's flattening the land, but it's changing it so that it's uh, it's actually taking the land height over here and trying to apply it over here. So I think we'll have to fix up the kitchen here. But it's a good thing we have the we we should have at least enough resources to do that. Right, so that won't be too bad. All of this is replaceable, really. Right, and since we have some more people, that should finish fairly soon. Taking a look at our work camps over here. Some of them, they don't necessarily need all of their people. So we'll shift them around like that. Okay, well, that looks like, uh, yeah. Yeah, so these two buildings should be rebuilt fairly, fairly soon, so that's not too bad. Right, in that case, I might as well chop down some of these uh, adjacent trees in the meantime. From the looks of things, things will just kind of gradually go from here. Right, so there we go, we'll get some more logs from that. And a tad more from over here. And okay, so they finished up the kitchen. So with like, I think three or four people on construction duty, this is, yeah, construction should be pretty fast, especially with these people kind of, you know, racking up um, experience as they do their tasks as well. Uh, so we have seven, seven rough stone blocks, 
14 logs. Yeah, we should be good enough. We should be good for uh, for the next little while. And we even have more logs and more stone hmm, along the way. So it looks like the food might uh, might take a little bit longer than I had expected for that to kind of, you know, come into fruition. But uh, once we get these two work stall, uh, work, workshop stalls done, we'll be able to start manufacturing some of the higher tier goods. I think with the farms, it'll take them a lot longer to, um, to get these food crops kind of done with. Right, so that'll be that. In the meantime, we can take a look at some of the other different things we can uh, kind of build here. So there's a, yeah, there's a fair amount of decor, there's a fair amount of other buildings we can build. It'll be really, really useful. We could get some lamps going on um, later on. And as time kind of goes on, we might want to build some housing for our folks. But for now, um, these, these buildings will just kind of have to do. Ah, there we go. Perfect. So one of these, where both of these workbenches are done. So this is pretty good. Now we can kind of convert these different uh, things to, um, to 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 planks. So with different work groups, we can we get, for example, um, Miss uh, Marstra's reformed compressors here. We can assign uh, one of the groups to do that. Or I believe if you don't set anyone there, I think they gradually do it. So, uh, yeah, we can assign them different orders like this to make pla planks, for example. We can make, like, say, for example, five runs of them. Um, and I think inside the day, they'll just gradually do that, which is quite nice. So if we assign them a, a particular group, I think if we assign them, like, say, one of these two-person groups, right, what will happen is that, yeah, two people here can come on through and they can work on this together. Um, Leola Shoulderburn is, I think, a one-person group, so she can only actually use one of these carpentry work stalls. But we have two here for the uh, for the sake of you know producing things really, really fast as time goes on. He seems to be quite mad. He kicked some logs and felt a little bit better. All right, so that's that. And would you look at that? People are sleeping now. After four days of intense work, they finally fell asleep. All right. Well, now after this point, uh, I think once we uh, once we establish the fact that you know our food is actually coming into the into the into the stockpile over here, I think it'll be good to uh, well, I think it'll be time to get some housing and stuff going like that. So what's happening over here? And hey, there we go. We're getting some pumpkins and things like that. So perfect. And we can get some more people sent down to our colony. So, for now, we can get an artisan, which will be able to do one thing better, as, as such as constructing or manufacturing, but you know what, I think for now, we'll just get a, a, a single, you know, criminal to join our work camps, really, all we really need is just kind of manual labor at this point. So we'll save up those prestige points, I don't know, maybe buy something later on, one of the real high-end things. So, but there we go, we got a pumpkin. Right, so lots of people are just kind of working through here, not bad, not bad. And how are we doing over here? Perfect, they're getting the rest of that building set up. Yep, the planks are being made. Oh, and I think the planks are immediately being used over here to make uh, the rest of the stuff. Or no, actually, never mind, it's in building materials. Okay, so that works too. So on the second side, so I think we'll make a few more of those. And I guess I'll get the rest of the camp here to get rid of everything around here. And kind of pile that back. Taking a look at food, we have, uh, oh wow, we have 12 pumpkins. We have a lot of those. You know what, I think I'll re-enable storing food over here because that storage room is definitely not enough. 
And now, I mean, in reality, it's much more than kind of 12 units of pumpkins, right? Because we can make them into pumpkin stew, we can make 10 units of that just to be kind of safe for now. And, uh, well, that should, yeah, that should open up a task all on its own. So it looks like she is doing that. She's gonna go around here, grab some pumpkins, put it along to the workshop, and... Maybe get things started? What is she doing? Idle. Okay. So yeah, some of the people had to take a break too. That works as well. Okay, well, that settles uh, the basic kind of, you know, resource processing portion. So, um, I think we'll make this, you know, an episode all on its own. And, well, I hope I'll see you guys next time for our second episode of Clockwork Empires. And, you know, be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, you know, part one so far. Ooh, looks like we're right in the middle of a uh, an, an attack as well over here. So, um, kind of a nice cliffhanger, I guess. Bye-bye for now.